I watched the final match, didn't see the tournament, watched the final match because everybody was talking about it, especially our UK fans. And I've got to say, first of all, it's a great looking building. I was astonished at Michael Cole and William Regal. Well, not so much William Regal. I knew he was good, but they were a great. No, um, no, no, no. It wasn't William Regal. It was Nigel McGuinness. Was it? I thought it was it was Regal. Shit. All right. Well, it was Nigel. Well, then Nigel. I know Nigel's great, too. See, I never saw the on camera. And so there you go. But anyway, Nigel, I know was great because he did a great job for Ring of Honor. But I was astonished at Michael Cole. I, I was confused because I saw Regal in the ring afterwards when he helped award the, the belt. Right. That's what happened. I'm sorry. I was astonished. I've never heard Michael Cole call a wrestling match before. It was, it was. I, I kill him so often here on the show, talking about how bad he is and how unenjoyable he is. And there are elements of his presentation I still can't stand, specifically when they have him on camera. And it's just, he's constantly in motion. His hands are constantly going. It's just, it's a way that broadcasters don't normally behave. But I got to say, he, I thought he did phenomenal for, um, for the main event of that whole show, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's what happens when you don't have a, you know, people screaming in your ear to plug the fucking next commercial or whatever. Uh, but anyway, so Cole and Nigel, I'm sorry, Nigel were great as an announced team. They played it straight and seriously, but here's the thing on this match, besides the fact, and I met both these guys when I was in England in October and they're nice kids. My here's here's my my com one complaint. Tyler Bate and he can't do anything about this except get older. He still looks like he's in grade school because he's 19 years old, and you know so just visually he doesn't look like the toughest son of a gun in the world. But age will change that. Um, they did nice technical wrestling. Uh, they they put effort into making everything mean something. They went in with the story of, of Bates. The shoulder had been injured previously. They threw stiff forearms that looked good. Not these bullshit flippers in between spots that nobody sells. Uh, the story of working of, of Pete Dunn working the bad arm was told all the way through the match and they didn't drop it at all. Um, but bait at one point, he fires back with a right hand punch. And I've said last week, I said, these guys can do all these fucking flips and backdrops and moonsaults. Can't throw a punch. Tyler Blake, uh, Tyler Blake, Tyler Bate threw a great punch and then sold his hand and Dunn sold it. Great. They did a great spot that got a huge round out of the crowd on an airplane spin spot, which was just really good and a nice twist. I won't spoil it for anybody. Um, there was one big dive in the whole match, which meant something. And, and Tyler Bate did it. And he tried to win afterwards. Imagine that threw the guy back in the ring, tried to beat him. Imagine that. Uh, then they went through some nice false finishes that the people bought uh, Tyler Bate. And once again, to be, <clears throat> to be a younger guy and, and not that big, he is stronger than waffle house coffee. I mean, just some of the things that he was did where he was just muscling done up where Dunn didn't have to help him, which contributed to the look of the thing. And finally, Tyler Bate had been trying for his finish the whole time, but couldn't get it because of his arm. And finally, he got it, and he won with his finish. Holy shit. What a concept. Um, I think Pete Dunn may have impressed me more all around. He's got a great heel face and some great heel expressions. And I may have gone with Dunn to win the thing just visually because he's a little bit more... He's a little bit more intimidating visually, physically, and he looks a little bit older, but both guys did a great job. I didn't have a problem with either guy winning it. And like I said, um, Tyler Bate don't have any problems that age will probably not help in just taking the, the, the new and the fresh off of, off of him, give him a little bit more grizzled look, but they worked it like a contest. They took everything seriously. They told a nice story that didn't take any stupid risks. It didn't look like a video game. Um, it, it wasn't a, a Memphis brawl or a bloody old fashioned grudge match between two guys that looked like they'd kill you in a dark alley, but it was a great technical wrestling match. Some nice nods to the world of sports style as these guys mature and get older, they've got great upsides. Um, so I like that. Now, if anybody finds tape of either one of them wrestling girls or blow up dolls, and I'm going to motherfuck them too. But in the meantime, fair play to you guys. Good show. Top men. Yeah, and you know, I've I talked to you various times about 
WWE is hard for me to get through, but I enjoy NXT. And I always tell you, oh, you know, we should we should watch a little more NXT. I always make sure you have the revival matches or anything good that happens there. And usually, you know, even if you find things that you don't like, you actually could see what's going on and, and, and you enjoy it, which, you know, debunks the whole myth that you just don't enjoy modern wrestling at all. Well, but, and, but that's, but that's what's convenient. Cause that's what people want to hear. That's why the fucking idiots about to be inaugurated tomorrow is in office. Cause that's what people want to hear. Right. But you know, the one thing I wanted to point out here was this UK show, which again was a Paul Levesque production. And by the way, Kevin Dunn wasn't producing the show. Michael. No, Cole. Michael no Cole. wonder I liked it. Yeah, Michael Cole was producing it. And I just want to say, I am someone who didn't have a lot, you know, at a certain point, I started to appreciate him, but I wasn't a big Triple H fan as a wrestler. We all know about all the backstage bullshit. We all know how he gutted. Uh, and, you know, it took a while before things turned around, the developmental program. And he, but between NXT and this, he he does good. He pr- puts on good fucking shows, I got to say. He deserves credit for what he's been doing. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't disagree with what you just said. But, uh, but in this case, I liked it, so that's why you're only going to hear about it here, folks, and nowhere else because it was complimentary to two guys that worked hard and took their business seriously and didn't just whore themselves out for a payoff or for self-gratification or jack himself off or whatever it is, this fucking... Omega's problem is that he wants to be a goddamn video game character or whatever. And <clears throat> it, the, the, the done, it wasn't for what they were doing. It may have been a four star match. It wasn't five stars. It wasn't Lawler and Funk or Flair and Steamboat. And, and they're, they're, they're young and it was a, a tournament match, a brand new promotion. So, you know, give them a break, but uh, it, it, there is no six star match. And, and I think we beat that horse pretty much to death. <laughs> 